So to create our create action, we define our create method and we can refresh our page and fill out a blog post and create the blog post. And this time it didn't refresh the page. It actually kept all the content there. And so we need to go to our Rails logs again and see what's going on. We got a post request from the form and it started processing with the post requests or the blog post controller, create action. And our parameters include all of that information from the form, which is neat. So we have our authenticity token and our blog post with the title and body attributes. And then we didn't render a template. So it said, okay, Rails, we're just gonna render no content for that as a default. So it returned a 204 no content and the browser said, okay, cool. We'll just leave it alone then. And our controller didn't do anything. So it didn't actually save that to the database. So that's the next step. We need to make a blog post again in memory, but this time we want to pass it those parameters. So if we say params blog post, that's going to give us everything from the Rails logs here. We're going to look in parameters, find the blog post key, and then we're going to grab everything inside of that. So it will give us the title and the body and assign those to our new blog post in memory. And if we call at blog post dot save, it's going to save that to the database. So let's try it and see what happens. If we click this, we get an error and it says forbidden attributes error. The reason for this is because if you had some bugs in your code where maybe you had a user and you could edit a user and there was an admin flag and you could inject your own field that said admin is true. If you did that and you just passed those parameters directly along to your database model, it would change those things in the database. So we need to be very careful which uh, parameters we allow to be saved in the database. So Rails does not allow you to directly pass params into your blog post uh, or new action and then save it. So same with any other model that you might have for users or anything else, you have to tell Rails specifically which fields you allow the user to submit. So in order to do that, we're gonna say, we'll pass in blog post params. This is going to be a private method called blog post params. And we can use Rails's secure, strong parameters uh, feature to make this secure. So we're gonna say, we require the params to have a blog post field, which it does. We see that right here. So we're gonna grab that out of there, grab all of these things, and then we wanna tell it which keys we allow. So we permit the title and the body uh, parameters, but nothing else. And that's okay right now because nothing else is available, but this allows you to say, hey, if there was admin is true, ignore that. We do not want you to uh, take that. So then that's going to assign it to the new blog post after parsing out our parameters. And then we wanna check if save was successful or not. Because if save was not successful, we wanna re-render the form and show errors here on this blog post new page. Maybe you forgot to write a title and we wanna show an error saying, hey, you must put a title in. So we need to check if successful, if save was true or false. And if it was true, we can redirect to our new blog post. And if it was a failure, we can say render the new action. And what this is gonna do is say, instead of trying to look for a create.html.erb, let's just reuse the new.html.erb template instead. And that one expects you to have a new blog post in memory. And we've already saved a new blog post in memory. We've just added some parameters to it, like title and body. So if it fails, we can use the same new template and we can have it display those form fields. So in order to make our model validate things, we can go into our blog post.rb and we can say validates the title presence is true, and we can also validate the body and make sure that it was present as well. So this will make sure it can't be an empty string or a nil, 
and these will raise errors when you try to call save if the title or the body was empty when it was submitted. That should return false here and then re-render our new. And if we create a blog post here, we get sent right back here like we expected. And you can always look at the network tab as well. You can see we made a post request to that page and it returned a 200 okay. But it wasn't really technically okay. So we wanna add a status here to override the default with Rails. And we say unprocessable entity to change that 200 okay response. If we do it now, we're going to get an error response of 422 unprocessable entity. And then this is going to return in our response that HTML for the new form. Now, we don't see any errors here, but what you'll see is now that we have submitted the body, if our title is blank, it's still gonna raise an error, but if we click this now, it's going to remember that body or the title or other attributes in the form. And that's because we have assigned those fields and we re-render the new form. This form is automatically going to say, hey, if you've got a title, put it as the value. If you've got a body, put it as the value. And you don't even have to specify that yourself because Rails knows you gave us this active record object, so we'll use the values that it has. So you can use that same form for editing posts, for creating new posts, and all of that stuff. So then from here, we actually want to display some errors. So what I'm gonna do is say if form.object.errors.any, then we'll display a little div. And this form.object is going to reference this at blog post model. So we can also specify at blog post here, but it's a little better if we reference the forms object, because if that ever, if this variable name ever changed or anything, we don't have to modify this code ever. So here we can go through and say form.object.errors full messages. And this is a feature that Rails gives you. Um, so we have our active record model. Let, let me pull this up. Our validations are a feature from active record that we can call validates. When we call save, it will automatically check to see if the title is not empty or the bottle body is not empty. And if either of them are, it will create an error on your model. And you can access that through dot errors. You can check to see if there are any, because this is uh, going to be for all these attributes, so there could be multiple errors. And then it also will help generate error messages for you. And you can go through each of those, take the message that it generated, and we can print it out. We'll say, and actually we'll run a div around these. So we can say message and closing div. And then we want to close our loop for the error messages themselves. And now, if we were to create our blog post again, we'll see title can't be blank. And if we left our body out as well, it's going to have two errors. The title can't be blank and the body also cannot be blank. So Rails is able to take the validations, give you errors, your controller knows are there errors or not, and it can decide if there are no errors, let's send you one place. If there were errors, let's send you another. And that is all your controller really does. It just is orchestrating where the user needs to go when different things happen. So if we were to fill out hello world three with an actual body, the validations should all be successful. Save should return true and there should be no errors. And this will hit the line 19, which should re redirect us to our brand new blog post. And it does. So it takes us to blog post number four, and we can see our new blog post there, which is perfect. So that's exactly what we want. Our create action is going to handle the logic of, you've given me some data, we'll put it in the database, we'll see if that's valid or not, and if it is, we'll send you to the brand new blog post that we saved, 
And if it wasn't valid data, we will take you back to the forum so you can fix it and try again. And that is all that we need to do for that. The next step is to build an edit page, which is pretty much the same process. We're gonna have an edit form and we'll have an update action in order to actually save those changes, but we need to do the same checks. We need to make sure that you didn't edit the blog post and remove the title or remove the body. We want those to still have content in them. So we'll take that a look at that in the next episode.